Good morning, my fellow yogic travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, live the life we love. Uh, I have a new acronym for myself. I call myself Romeo, retired old men eating out. So anybody call me for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and we'll make a day. Uh, you know, I like to talk about affirmations <clears throat> because the world can certainly under, under uh, can be understood as positive and negative affirmation, and it creates such a different spin on how you see the world and your perspective. So what my affirmation <clears throat> teachers taught me was how do I block instead of allow the natural flow of well-being to me? How do I pay attention to what makes me feel the best? How do I attune myself to good vibrations? which is the name of the yoga group that I like to work with. And by the way, um, a week from today, we'll have our next session on engagement and disengagement, the two paths of yoga. Contact my website, Gabriel, gabrielhalpern.com, to check in with that. So first, I had to learn to identify what's important to me if I'm going to attune to the good vibrations. And then teaches me to follow the path of least resistance. Don't keep pushing against stuff. Go with the flow. And I have to admit, things go better the happier I am. And so they remind me, learn to appreciate more than you criticize. Learn to have positive expectations instead of negative anticipation. Learn to let go of what is life draining and learn to embrace what is life giving. Because what I make my point of attraction sets the tone for what is to come. So that's what I just want to share with you about getting positive. Today I want to talk about Jean Houston, one of my favorite female gurus. She's taught me that you have to be a social artist. And you know, I always say I'm a, I'm a performance artist using yoga to get across my message. And the message is peace and love always. Or consciousness, developing awareness, educating yourself. And the mysteries of the mind without drugs. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with ethnobotany or ethnopsychiatry or plant-based revelation. But it's all chemical, and yoga certainly changes you chemically as well. But what happens to the mind as it moves to altered states and comes back to what seems to be ordinary consciousness? First thing we have to think about if we would change our mindset is planetization. It's no longer enough for us to change our own society. As I like to say, can you have a healthy house in a sick street or a healthy street in a sick city or a healthy city in a sick state? or a healthy state in a sick country, or a healthy country in a sick hemisphere, or a healthy hemisphere in a sick world, can't do it. So I prefer to mythologize everything rather than pathologize everything. Because after you're bored with this whole thing comes commitment. And that's how you find out what your evolutionary pulse is and how you can step up and share your gift to help out. Of course, we're all kind of psychonauts, right? Not just astronauts. We're going into our psyche, which is another frontier that for so many people haven't been tapped because we're right now, you could say, in the most incredible transformation of human history. And uh, the odds are big, right? Like, you know, the species becoming extinct, not having a, a sustainable habitat. That's uh, pretty big, right, to face. Uh, I also say that we're supporting women all the time. Women are rising into the public sphere. Thank God it's been a long time. And it changed the way we, we think about work, about worship, about wonder and about I forgot the full worth self-worth so women are helping to lead the way and we're going to support them and follow them and uh, get rid of paranoia and suspicion again don't troll the news people if you create suspicion and mistrust of other people then we can't work together we can't network together. We can't believe in each other. If you only believe in the worst of what human beings are possible of, then the huge fund of human decency seems to remain untapped, but it's there. you got to find it. And it's true, the collective shadow of us all is a refuse heap of immature behaviors, unskilled behaviors, and our culture seems to, san to, to sanctify mediocrity and stupidity, and that's another shadow, as well as the shadow of recalcitrance. So if those of us who think we're in the, the forefront and the spearhead of cultural change are recalcitrant and afraid to change, then the other people who have less resilience and less resources will definitely not follow suit. 
So the biggest thing we can do is remember that imagination gives a big jolt to your brain's neurochemistry. And as a result, we have to be lifelong educators, not only of ourselves, but especially of our children and generations coming after us. And remember that intelligence is much more than just helping people to have math skills and high IQ. But we want to develop verbal intelligence, linear intelligence, imaginative intelligence, culinary intelligence, intuitive intelligence, kinetic intelligence, and so forth. And always musical intelligence, because music is the sphere of where the harmony of all life touches our heart. So find your soul, confront your shadow, help out.